You are exalted above other names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temitaya. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular daily devotional, this particular Christian book, is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and that's why we call it Season 5. And all those videos from... 2020, they are all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Timmy Ageda, which is right on the screen. I will encourage you to visit my channel, not only to view the old Open Heavens videos, which are a great study guide, but most importantly, to view the Open Heavens for the current day. And I know that will bless you exceedingly and very important while you're on my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless you as you do. Now, Pastor Adebori led me to Christ in October 1997, a few years back when I was in the University of Lagos, Nigeria in West Africa. And that will give you a few scriptures from the Bible and the memory verse. And that helps you to understand the body of the text. Praise God. So let's go straight into the daily devotional. Today is Thursday, September the 5th. So Thursday, September the 5th. And the title of today's daily devotional is Created for Him. Praise God. Created for Him. Um, our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Praise God. And I'm going to be reading today from the New King James, which has easier English to understand. Same King James, but without the wither goes down. So Ephesians 2 from verses 1 to 10. And the title of today's daily devotional is created for him. So we're created for him. All just Christ, uh, no, Apostle John said, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of many, and that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Praise God, created for him. So let's go straight because uh, anytime I see the topic, scriptures start flying through my head, and all of them you know coming from my heart and flying you know into my mind and i think that scripture is very all things were made by the lord and without him was not anything made that was made now ephesians 2 verses 1 to 10 said and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now walks in the children, in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, who were by nature children of rot, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By his grace, we have been saved and raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness to us, towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. It is not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Praise the Lord. Oh, that's beautiful. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. So um, this is Paul writing to the Ephesians church. So he's talking to the Christians. He's saying that we, we too were once sinners. We were once dead in sin. But God sent Jesus Christ. You know, he died for. The Bible says in verse 4, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, just well, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we we're dead in trespasses he made us alive together with Christ by grace we have been saved you know so what God is saying here is that even while we were the Bible says while we were yet sinners Christ died for the ungodly so God didn't send his son to die for us when we we're very good that we we're walking you know Christ Paul said Christ came into the world to save sinners of which I am chief 
And God is reminding us today that by grace we have been saved. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. Okay. And then he reminds us that we are his workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You understand? So, um, I, I shared a scripture that um, if one died for all, then all are dead. Therefore, it follows that those for whom Christ died should live their lives for him who died and rose again. In other words, because when Jesus Christ died, we all died. And because he died for us. So, if he died for us, then as we are alive now, we must live our lives for him who died and rose again for us. Praise God. We are his workmanship. So, we are created for him. We are created for him. He bought us with a price. Amen. Praise God. So we're his workmanship. And what does it mean? What does workmanship mean? When it says we are his workmanship, what minute this? Okay, so this is my Apple phone. Yeah. Okay, so this is the workmanship of Apple. And they have put their logo on this. This is certified. You understand? So this is their handiwork. So when they have made this phone, they then put their logo on it to confirm that this is the workmanship of Apple. We are also the workmanship of God, recreated in Christ Jesus. So we are, we are, God has put his logo on us. We are God's property. We are created. So this, this phone is made by Apple. Do you understand? They have the patent. Do you God? So God is our creator. We are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works. All things were made by him, were created for him. Praise God. The memory verse is taken from Colossians. So have that behind your mind. That we belong to Christ. He's ours. I mean, we are his. Amen. He's ours and we are his. He, we are created for him. Amen. Colossians 1.16. And it, seems for, it says, Colossians 1.16, very important. It says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him hallelujah for by him were all things created that are in heaven and uh, that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities and powers all things were made by him and for him it's talking about jesus christ the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was with god all things were made by him all things were made by him this is third time i'm quoting that scripture daddy says no matter how long we spend on earth we will never see a tree that eats its own fruit trees are planted by human beings for their pleasure not for god so not for the pleasure of the trees in the same way god made us for his own pleasure we were not made to satisfy ourselves. We were made to satisfy him. Therefore, people live their lives just to give themselves pleasure. Therefore, when people live their lives just to give themselves pleasure, they are malfunctioning. All things are for the pleasure. They are and were created. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So that song is in Revelation, the book of Revelations, that God created all things. For his pleasure, they are and were created. So that is saying that no tree eats its own fruit. That human beings plant trees for their pleasure. You understand? So we plant the mango tree so it can bring forth fruit for us to eat and for us to also get shade under the the you know under its branches. So the, the you know we planted that tree for our own pleasure in the same way God created us for his pleasure. Okay, so that is says here when people live their lives just to give themselves pleasure, they are malfunctioning. So if I, if, um, if Apple has created this phone, you know, and the, the, the purpose of the phone is for people to purchase the phone and use it for communication. If it's not used, if it's not a mobile phone that can communicate, it's malfunctioning. I need to go back to the repairer for, 
you know, for servicing. So everything has a purpose. So God created us for a purpose. And we need to fulfill that purpose because at the end of the day, we're going to stand before him and we must give account of the things we have done in the body. We are going to, that's an appointment that none of us can cancel. So you must find out your purpose. Nobody can tell you what your purpose is except your creator, your manufacturer. Okay, nobody. Um, the only reason why Mary knew the purpose of Jesus Christ is because God Himself told her, He said, You shall call His name Jesus, for He shall save the people from their sins. So, nobody can tell me my purpose except my manufacturer. You understand? So, this Apple phone, Apple would show us how to use it, amen, through the manual. Praise God. So, the only person who can tell you your purpose is God himself. Anyway, whichever way, God has given every one of us who are Christians a purpose, non-negotiable, and that is that we win souls. Now, as you do that, as you are walking, God will then begin to put you in the right place. He would, that's the main purpose we have as Christians, to win others to Christ. True, just like I said, we are the light of the world. You understand? And we are the salt of the earth. That people will see us and glorify our Father in heaven. So it must be about our Father's business. Know ye not that it must be that I was about my Father's business. That's what Jesus Christ told his parents. When they said, we'll be looking for you. For, they said, why were you looking for you? Know ye not that I must be about my Father's business. Okay, Jesus Christ said we should occupy till he comes. We should do business until he comes. So the Father's business is winning souls and telling others about the love of God. How Jesus Christ died and rose again and was wounded for our, our transgressions and how we must accept him as Lord and Savior. Now, if you're not doing that, you're living for your, you're just living your life for yourself. You are malfunctioning and you give account. Having lots of money, that is says, driving good cars and owning houses does not mean that someone has fulfilled his or her destiny because all those things are for the fellow's pleasure. Destiny is not measured by how much money or you have or how powerful you have become. It is measured by the degree to which you are doing the will of God for your life. So destiny is not measured by how much money you have or how powerful you have become. It is measured by the degree to which you are doing the will of God for your life. For example, someone might have seen Joseph as the prime minister of Egypt and said, this guy has made it. He has at, he is fulfilling destiny because of the exalted position that he has ten, attained. But if Joseph did not save his family from the famine as God had created him to do in Genesis 45 verses 1 to 11, he would have been a failure. There will be many rich people who will finish their races here on earth and rather than being told, well done, that good and faithful servant, they will hear that wicked and slothful servant. And that it says, I pray that this will not be your portion in Jesus' name. I pray that this will not be my portion in Jesus' name. I say a huge amen. That in the name of Jesus Christ, we will not miss the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not have a regret at the end of the day. So that is saying just because somebody has money and has built houses and is driving cars doesn't mean that he has fulfilled his destiny. You understand? So, and that many rich people will get to heaven thinking that, um, you know, um, rich, uh, you know, this, this, that, that, that. They'll just get to heaven and God, will, they'll find out that they did not fulfill their purpose. And instead of hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant, God, they'll just hear, get away from me, you wicked and slothful servant. You see? So you have to find out what your destiny is. The other day I saw a billionaire in Nigeria. A billionaire in Nigeria. So his name starts with C. And he was preaching the gospel in the marketplace with an interpreter. Not any kind of, you know, just talking gibberish. He was preaching fire come down from heaven. You understand? So he's a billionaire preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? So he knew what his purpose is. And that's the first calling of all of us to win souls to Christ. And that's the purpose of this channel. Amen. So, and that is using Joseph as an example, that somebody would have seen Joseph after, as prime minister and said, this guy has made it, he has fulfilled his purpose. But that was not his, his purpose was not being prime minister. His purpose was that God brought him to the kingdom for such a time as this, to save everyone of his family alive, because there was going to be a famine. And God didn't want his children, his gen the generation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to perish in Canaan because of hunger. So he sent Joseph ahead of them. Okay, you understand? So that he could keep his family alive this day. That was what he said in um, Genesis 45. So just because he had become prime minister didn't mean that he had fulfilled his destiny. If after he became prime minister, if he did not, if his people were not saved, he would give account to God. That means he would have been a failure. 
praise God. May God help us. Beloved, this is good to be rich, famous, and powerful. But even when even when those things come, you will still not be fulfilled unless you do the will of God. So I wanted to say just now. So you see, you can acquire the building, acquire the houses, acquire everything, and still not you'll be a very, very rich man. And still many rich people have committed suicide because money does not bring fulfillment. It is what we do for God that brings fulfillment. Praise God. The calling, you know, God can call people into different kinds of calling. He can call you to be a teacher in a village school, and there you are fulfilled. You are fulfilled. Praise God. You must you understand. So, whatever your calling is, the only person who can tell you is God. So, and so money doesn't bring fulfillment. And that's why some people are still depressed. You know, they're in church, they're not, they're still depressed. They haven't found their calling. You understand? So you must do. Your calling beloved it is good to be rich famous and powerful but even those things when those things come you still will not be fulfilled unless you do the will of god don't chase shadows daddy says chase god's calling for your life the just will live by his own faith however okay so it, it seemed foolish that is given an example now it seemed foolish when i left lecturing to to pastor is when i left lecturing to pastor this pastor a small church however because that was the will of god for my life it was the best decision i ever made in fulfilling his will god gave me all that i could ever ask for and more praise god and i remember um i got i, I was a new christian and i was in the redeemed fellowship in the university of lagos and um just one day you know this was with the late pastor Escol, and we're having leaders meeting so i just thought to myself you know uh, we're having leaders meeting let me just buy some biscuits and all that and all that i was just growing up i didn't really know much but i'm just being a christian you know that we're having leaders meeting. let me just buy refreshments for us so when the leaders you know they just thought that oh she must be the let's make her the head of welfare so then i put me in decorating head of the department which was what some position that some people were looking for but that was not my calling i was so out of place you know <laughs> I was just mixing the colors wrong, you know, and everything. And we're having meetings. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't. I didn't understand what was going on. And you know, being the head of the department was a position that others were, were, were they wanted. Do you get? But I was not feeling fulfilled in it. I was the pre- in fact fellowship days were. Cause I didn't know what was going. On. I was just a new Christian, and this was not my forte, you know. And then the Holy Spirit said. I should leave that department and go and join the Bible study team. So that means I was leaving, being the head of a department, which was a very prestigious position in the eyes of the canal, and then go under another person who was the Bible, the head of the Bible study team. Praise God. And um, I did that. And they thought I was crazy. They wanted to have meetings with me, ask me why. And I just said, I, that wasn't, God didn't call me there. They thought I was crazy. You know, this is being a, do you know, do you know what it is to be the head of a department in, you know, in this fellowship? You know, you don't know, but that was not my calling. Do you understand? I was miserable and I would not have fulfilled my destiny. So I came out and went on that another head of a department as a Bible study teacher. Ah, praise God. And boom, which is what I'm doing today. Praise God, because I'm exactly where God wants me to be. And I began to teach. And I remember the first topic that we spoke on was on the blood of Jesus. And as I spoke, the anointing of God came upon me to show that this is exactly where I want you to be. Praise God. So, you know, that is saying that, you see, he was a lecturer. His, his ambition was to be the youngest, the first young, youngest vice chancellor in Africa. And he was going to get there. He would have gotten there. But the Holy Spirit said to him, that's not what I called you to. And made him leave that flourishing lecturing job to go and be the pastor of a small church. And what the church was earning in a month was way less than what he was earning as a lecturer. But God called him. That was his calling. You understand? So better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasures and trouble therewith. Praise God. That is, says, um, it, it seemed foolish when I left lecturing to pastor a small church. However, because that was the will of God for my life, it was the best decision I ever made. In fulfilling his will, God gave me all that I could ever ask for. So you see, God's will for you will not be popular with other people. But that doesn't matter. No, you know, they didn't die for you. So don't listen to other people and what they think you should do. You know, they didn't die for you. They were not there on the conference call when God spoke to you. You understand? So 
Don't listen to anybody. The person that you should be listening to, our eyes must be on God and whatever he tells us to do. And many people will not support it. But that doesn't matter. As long as God is pleased, as long as you know you heard God. A tree that bears fruit for its owners will eat will to eat, a fruit that a tree that bears fruit for its owners to eat will be taken care of. The owner will give it all the nutrients and care that it needs to flourish. When you pursue God's will for your life, he will ensure that you never lack any good thing. Ask him what his purpose for your life is and pursue it. So ask him. It's his uh, I heard a man of God say that it is God's um God's responsibility to tell us what we want him, what he wants us to do. So ask him genuinely. You understand? Ask him and say, Lord, this is what I'm doing right now. This is what I'm doing right now. You know, I remember one of our pastors, he's a, um, he was serving in a particular department. And then one day he, he occurred to him that ah, he has really not asked God for his purpose. So he said, God, you know, I'm here now. This is where I'm doing this. Is where I'm, I'm serving in this department. And the Holy Spirit said, You should continue in that department. Continue with that work you're doing. Praise God. So ask him what his purpose for your life is and pursue it. And God can decide that whatever he tells you to do, do it. And you see, he can approach you from, <laughs> from the U.S. and say to you to go back to your village in Noble States or in some Kingston, somewhere in Jamaica or somewhere in remote Ghana, <laughs> you know. And you may be struggling and struggle. But you know what? You pray, pray it out in the Holy Spirit. Pray it out in the Holy Spirit. Post, the key point is pursue God's purpose for your life. Pursue God's purpose for your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit, for leaving your Holy Spirit unto your work on earth is done. Thank you because the plans that you have for us, we know that they are plans of good, no doubt in our heart, plans of good and not of evil, that we may have a hope and a future. Our dear Father, our lovely King, our beautiful Savior, we ask Almighty God that you help us to remain in the calling into which you have called us, Almighty God. Help us to do all that is in your heart and in your mind in the name of Jesus Christ all the days of our lives father help us that as the deer pants after the water but what after the water brooks cause our souls to pant after you also almighty god in the name of jesus any one of us who are listening to who are listening to this open heavens today who are not in god's who are not in your perfect will yet father move us by the power of your holy spirit in the mighty name of jesus help us almighty god to stand perfect in all the will of god in the name of jesus thank you god the holy spirit father we give you thanks we give you glory we give you praise we give you adoration we glorify your great name in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen thank you thank you thank you for taking time to listen to me i hope this blessed you i'm sure it did um i'm very important while you're on my youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe 50 percent of the people who follow me have not subscribed to my channel so please subscribe because that really helps my channel and god bless you exceedingly my name again is sister timmy tire and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow god bless you exceedingly have a beautiful day there is no